Okay, here we go. Um, I decided to change it a little bit. That PDF viewer that I was talking in, um, kind of annoying. So here we go. Hopefully this goes better. Uh, once again, I hope you guys are all well. I hope your families are well. Um, this is a crazy time. Um, my family is well. We're healthy. Um, having two four-year-olds running around is kind of crazy, but that's the way life goes, right? Um, so if you guys have some kind of an issue where you can't do work or the schedule that I give you doesn't work out, please talk to me, send me an email, give me some kind of communication, and we can work something out for you. So, um, All right, so here we go. Let's jump into this problem here. Uh, I give you a vector field. It's absolutely terrible. Um, and I want you to calculate the line integral, which covers the perimeter of the disk. I guess I should have said in this example that we're going counterclockwise. So, and notice it is a closed, uh, it's closed integral, closed line integral. Uh, so what I do is integral of f dot with dr, that's m dx plus n dy. So in this case, uh, we rec you should recognize quickly that this is one where I can do Green's theorem. Green's theorem takes the line integral, which you can imagine this parameterization. If I were to try to parameterize this, usually when I do a circle, I use sines and cosines. Um, X equals cos 5 cosine theta, Y equals 5 sine theta, and I would take theta from 0 to 2 pi. If I were to do this in this thing, it would be like, imagine if it was a Y having a uh, five, 5 sine theta and then 5 cosine theta. The parameterization would be just, it'd be straight up impossible, um, at least as far as I'm concerned. So what uh, what we do is we say, well, maybe we could use Green's theorem. Uh, remember that Green's theorem is uh, says that the integral of f dotted with dr, which is the integral of m dx plus n dy, is uh, the double integral. So we go from a line integral to a double integral of the curl of f dA, where we go, we do a double integral over this entire region. Now there's some restrictions for me to be able to use that. It has to be, F has to be um, uh, defined and continuous in the entire region. And that does qualify here. You may say, when would it not? Well, what if I had a, a, this X right there was in the denominator of this fraction? Well, then it would be undefined at X equals zero and I couldn't apply Green's theorem. Anyway, we're good to go there. So the curl is, um, this is not written well. Uh, M is uh, this thing. It should not say M sub Y. Um, when I, oh wait, no, that is correct. Sorry, this is M here. This is N there. So I got to do the, the integral over the curl of N sub X minus M sub Y. So when I calculate M sub Y, I do the partial derivative of this thing with respect to Y. Well, that gives me a negative 3y squared. Um, and then I got to do product rule here. I do that is my, um, my product part right there. So the derivative of the first with respect to y is 1 times the second is this, plus uh, the derivative of y, or sorry, the derivative of the sine piece, which gives me cosine of, and then an x comes out front because of chain rule. And this y is that y right there. So that's m sub y, <coughs> excuse me. Um, n sub x is uh, this thing partial with respect to x. So this term right here comes from treating this x as a constant and um, deriving, and sorry, treating this x as a thing that I'm deriving it with respect to and the 4 and the 1 minus y squared as a constant piece, right? So what's the derivative of 10x with respect to x? It's 10. What's the derivative of 4 times 1 minus y squared times x with respect to x? It's just 4 times 1 minus y squared, which I distributed the 4 in. This one is really similar to this, so I won't go over the details, but it's product rule, um, and I get this and that. So this is where it becomes like kind of convenient. Notice, look, oh, that term's there and that term, oh, they match, sweet. So when I do n sub x minus m sub y, the curl for this vector field, that's our vector field, 
um, I get uh, 4 minus y squared. That's it. Is that correct? Yeah. So the minus 4y squared, I do um, that, but then I add this to it, so I get this. Let me go move myself. Um, so from there, <coughs> excuse me, uh, I got to do the, uh, I, I left it as R. I wanted it to be arbitrary and didn't want to rewrite write too many things. And then DA, I look at this region here and I say, oh, I'm going to do this with polar. So I convert this over to polar. Remember the DA, dx, dy, if I was in rectangular, goes to R, D, R, D, theta. Um, I get 4 minus y squared. Well, what is y squared uh, when I convert to polar? Well, y is, um, pause. So look up where the little webcam thing is, right? Um, because uh, we're in polar, x is r cosine theta and y is r sine theta. So down here, I, where am I? Right here. There, I need to square y. So when I square the the r sine theta right there, I get r squared sine squared theta. So that's this right there. Hopefully that makes sense. Anyway, from there, I'm going to distribute the r in. So I get 4r um, minus r cubed times sine squared theta. Um, I did it as an inner and an outer integral. So the inner integral is... Um, this with respect to r. Well, this goes to 2r squared. This here goes to minus 1 fourth r cubed, or sorry, r to the fourth. And then uh, the sine squared doesn't change. It gets treated as a, con as a constant. So it's just sine squared of theta. So um, I kind of did my notation poorly here. Um, the d theta should not be there. I'm evaluating that from r equals 0 to r equals 5. And let's see, there we go. Okay, sorry, had a short interruption there. Um, where was I? I just, all right, so we integrated here. I'm evaluating from r equals 0 to r equals 5. Why is that? Because on this right here, we're going from 0 up to 5. Um, do that, I get 50 minus um, 625 over 4 sine squared. Uh, theta. Um, from there, that needs to, so so this is still all correct, this is still the inner. I'm going to manipulate that until it's integratable. Um, we use our uh, power reduction or double angle formulas, however you want to think about them, to get rid of that sine squared. That sine squared is one half, one minus cosine two theta. You may say, hey, there's no half, but look, that four there it changed to an 8, so I just moved the half out front. Since I already had a messy fraction, then this is just easier to deal with. Um, with a calculator, I'm going to do 50 minus 625 over 8 and get this. Um, and then I've got a minus cosine 2 theta. From there, I need to integrate that from 0 to 2 pi. So um, this is a constant, so I get a theta. And then my minus cosine 2 theta goes to minus sine 2 theta over 2. Conveniently, I'm integrating from 0 to 2 pi. So this sine um, at both those bounds is going to be 0 because it will give me sine of 4 pi, which is 0, and sine of 0, which is 0. So I just um, I, I evaluate this piece from 0 to 2 pi, the zero zeros, and the 2 pi. Um, cancels down here with that 8 to give me a 4. So I get negative 225 pi over 4. Hopefully you're good with that, um, and I'll make another one for the next problem.